Alright, so I've gone through and I've done something. Uh, it's not great. Um, it turns out I have my ambient occlusion hooked up to the wrong nodes. Um, and I've just made a green texture and I've thrown that so we have uh, the green is for the ambient occlusion and the blue is for the curvature. Um, and you can see, whatever the heck settings I have for this ambient occlusion right now uh, look pretty awful. Um, we are getting a little bit of the underside texture showing up in here, but it looks overall just terrible. Um, it doesn't do a great job of picking up on details uh, at all. So clearly we need to refine this. Like you can see that here it's you know showing up a little bit. Um, but we're going to have to definitely go in and sort of refine that a little bit. Um, so if you go in, again, a lot of these nodes are pretty much really similarly named. So if you just go in and do a color correct, uh, you want to look for the redshift color correction. Um, and this is a little color correction, just the default one that comes with Maya. Um, so I'm just going to go in and grab the out color and of the ambient occlusion, put that into the input. And then just grab the out color of this and dump it into uh, blend color three. Blend color three. Um, so now we should have a little bit more control over this just so we can figure out what the heck we're doing. So maybe if I did something like bump up the contrast, I don't know if this is going to be super delightful looking. Um, it's probably going to look awful, honestly. I have very little faith in the my ability to use these color correct nodes. And sometimes if I've messed with values to the point where I don't know what I did to get it back to the original state, I will literally just make a new ambient occlusion node, which honestly might be what I do here because this looks pretty weird and I feel like I've made some of the settings very, very extreme in a way that's going to make it just hard to work with in general. Um, so apparently by messing with the levels a little bit, I can kind of squish some of this stuff down. Um, and now, for some reason, we're having orange, which is very questionable. I have no orange shaders. But anywho, um, so you can kind of mess with that. It's, again, a lot of the same same stuff as Arnold, just like different names. You get slightly different options in certain areas. Um, but, yes. So let me, really quick, I'm just going to see what happens if I actually go through and I make another um, ambient occlusion node. Was that an A? That was... Is there an AI in the occlusion there? Oh no, okay, there's a redshift. Um, redshift and the occlusion. Out color, just pop that into the input. And see what happens. Probably something very weird and extreme looking because we've done lots of crazy stuff. Actually, not too weird and extreme. It's just for some reason turned everything orange, so that's fine. Um, the theory remains the same um, behind using this. I just, one reason that I usually do procedural and normal is literally just because I like that isolating view. I think it's, for me personally, it's incredibly helpful for the way I work. Um, so, anywho, uh, I might just sort of abandon this node because it looks ridiculous, frankly. Um, actually, but now we have more red, so who the heck knows. Um, anywho, that's the color correct. It exists. Uh, I'm going to really quickly just uh, get rid of this entire entire green material. I just don't want to deal with it, it turns out. It looks ridiculous. Um, Alright, so now we're basically just back to the red and the blue, uh, where the blue should be highlighting the corners of this. Um, and that is something that I still do kind of want to refine. Maybe I want a little bit more blue on that. Um, so, we'll go into the redshift color correction again, and this time we'll just grab the out value of curvature, put it into either RGB, and grab, if I put it into R down here, I need to grab the R uh, up here, and then put that into the R of, actually no, sorry, this is out color, we have RGB values for this, we just use the whole RGB value. Um, Sometimes I forget that that is a thing in Redshift. Um, and then you can just kind of mess with things the same way that you would uh, normally and see if you're able to you know, push the, the colors a little bit further. Um, the other option is since, like honestly, I find the color correction pretty anti-intuitive. Anti um, that's not a word. 
Um, you could try the default Maya color correct if you wanted to. Um, or my personal preference is just use a ramp shader. I find them to, they work just like the levels of Photoshop pretty much, and I find them to be uh, most of the time much more intuitive. So I'm just going to grab the the out and put it in the out B, and then I'll grab out color and pop that into blend color too. And if we actual arms. Uh, if we play this again, you should see that now we are able to theoretically a little bit more easily get some control over uh, exactly what's happening. We can kind of like force the values back into uh, an area that we're sort of happy with. Uh, so in this case, by pushing the black forward, uh, we've gotten rid of, we've sort of thinned the lines a little bit. I push the white down and then push the back black, the black back, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Um, it's going to give you a little bit thicker lines. You can also see it's pulling a little bit of blue in to areas that maybe we don't quite want blue. So that's not ideal. Um, and you'll also notice, like, this is where I did um, some, this is actually the back of the model where I've done just gross looking texturing on this, uh, or gross and not really finished it. Uh, and the procedural texturing is picking up on that pulling. So if you're ever doing procedural texturing, it is important to actually get rid of some of that pulling. Um, but anywho, so let's just sort of say that we're, you know, reasonably happy with that. Um, if we wanted to do what we did in Arnold and throw a noise texture in there, uh, we could do that. So again, just do noise. Actually, we have like eight noise textures made. I'll just use one of those. Um, uh, so Redshift. So actually, I found and this is like a little bit weird that Redshift doesn't have, or at least I've not been able to find like a multiply node like uh, like Arnold has. So if you want to get that noise texture in, a lot of the times I'll sort of come through and like cheat it weirdly by adding in additional textures in here. Um, and that's where Redshift gets like a little bit bizarre, kind of. Um, the other thing you could do, theoretically if you want, and I think this is actually what I'm just going to do in this case. Um, like I could, if I wanted to, I could go in and I could, you know, make basically another area of red. Um, and this would require me to reorder things, which is why I'm not going to do this. Um, but what I could do is theoretically scratch out a bunch of areas of red and just overlay them onto this little line here. And basically go back in and basically cut, uh, what am I saying? Or, um, if this doesn't make sense, it's not a huge deal. Um, but basically what I would do is come in with my chrome, I would add red everywhere except the edges, and then I would come back in with a noise texture, add more red just over everything, and that would cover up some of this chrome. And then I would put my scratches on. And the reason that that ordering is important is because if I put the scratches on and then came back and covered a bunch of it up with red noise, it's going to cover up those scratches. So in that case, I would have to do these little corner scratches first. So again, take red, take, take your chrome, add the red just like we did, um, so it would cover everything except what's currently blue, and then add more red on top of that. It's a little bit convoluted. Um, the other thing you could also do is go into your ramp texture and just throw one of your existing weird pre-existing noise textures into the... Clearly I was not looking for the black value. That looks really diseased and really awful. Um, where's the white value? It is actually the white value I think I was looking for. Um, and just pop the noise directly into the white texture question mark. Okay, cool. Um, so now that that's, and this is why I love that you can map uh, noise textures into ramps and ramps into ramps, and it makes everything so much easier. So in this case, and you could have also actually done this in Arnold too, had you use the ramp texture. The reason I don't use the ramp texture in Arnold is because I like that isolating cue, and sometimes ramps don't work with it, uh, which is weird. So I do things a little bit differently depending on what engine I'm in. Um, but this does save you some notes. Um, so I just threw the noise texture into the white area. The white was basically, hey, show the blue. Uh, and by cutting some of that white with the black and the noise texture, it then gives me this really nice splotchy edge. Um, so that's convenient. And at this point, I don't really want this to be blue. So what I'm going to do is just go into my existing texture and find my metal texture, wherever the heck that is. I... Metal texture and pop that in for blue. And now we have chrome for silver, little edge scratches. And this is pretty much like what we started with in Arnold. Um, 
so that is sort of different ways to modify this. Um, I'll go through her grins and just add a little bit of grime onto this in the next video. And unless I'm going crazy, I've not really found a comparable way to add dust in Arnold. Uh, or I'm sorry, in, in Redshift. Um, it's certainly not labeled utility node. Um, so there's... Oh, actually, this might be a thing. I will experiment with this and probably be back with another video because I don't think I found this last time I was trying to do this. Dirt in the next one, I'll experiment with, with dust after that.